Hey guys, this is Amber Burnett and this is my new YouTube channel. I just thought I would start sharing some videos of our life here on our new property. We recently purchased a farmhouse that was built in the 1940s and we've been slowly remodeling. Um, we've also been adding animals and we've had such a great time. It's truly a dream come true to me to have this property. It's always what I wanted. And so I just thought I'd start sharing some of our adventures here and it's always an adventure here. But also I homeschool. I was previously in a, a teacher and that's what I have my degree in. And so now I homeschool our two little ones. We have a seven and a five year old. And so I thought I'd start sharing some of our homesteading or developing a homestead and some of our homeschooling adventures. And so if those things interest you, I hope you continue to follow along on our journey. But then today I'm gonna to ask my husband, David, to join me and we're gonna kinda of talk about our properties, some of the remodel we've already done and some of the animals we've already added and also some of the adventures we've already had. So um, join in. And this is my husband, David. Hey, <laughs> hi everyone. So first we're gonna talk about how awesome it was that we even found this property in this house. Finding a house with land in the city, not to mention it's right by where we work, is really hard, impossible almost, and super expensive. So it was totally a God thing that we got this house, and that's a whole nother story that we'll share on mm -hmm. another video, because yeah. that would take the whole video. So, but I am excited about sharing that. But for this one, we're just gonna talk about where we are now and what we've done so far. So finding the house was totally a God thing, right? Yep. We're three and a half miles from the church and the coffee shop, mm -hmm. which is nice. We're close to everything, yet we feel like we're way out in the country. Yes, it really does feel like official country living here. The thing is, I was raised um, when I was raised raising animals. I raised goats in FFA. I know that's shocking for some people that know me personally, but I raised goats and David lived in Missouri, Missouri, and, which I'm from Missouri too. Outside of Kansas city. Yeah. Amber always says that she's more country than I am because she raised a goat and listened to country music. He says he shoveled manure and stuff. And showed horses and grew up on land. Yes. But he was also very Miami. So That's it's right. kind of There's conflicting, but anyway, yeah. I think I'm more country. I was an FFA, <laughs> goats, the whole thing, horses. But anyway, we all we both loved farm animals and wanted land for our kids. So this has been awesome for us. Um, also, remodel is something I enjoy. It's something that I've been part of since I was a child. My parents remodeled our house that we grew up in. And then since then, we've remodeled and built our the church we pastor and the coffee shops. And then our previous house we lived in, we basically completely flipped it. Yeah. We gutted the bathrooms. I can't even tell you the list of things we did on that house. Um, and so luckily we did those things because because we did all of those things it made it possible for us to sell it for a higher price because we flipped it and yeah. get this land yeah that's right we wouldn't have been able to get this land had the lord not really stepped in and blessed us with some buyers that basically were able to buy our house at full price which enabled us to put the money down in this house and also do some work to it when we got into it right so when we first came, let's just go back to when we first came to this property. It was awesome because I could see the vision in my mind. I'm like, yes, I can totally see what's what we can do with this. But if you don't, if you don't naturally have that ability, you would have looked at it and said, oh my gosh, I don't know. And a lot of people would run the other way because it was very clear that it was going to take a lot of work a lot of money, a mm -hmm. lot of patience to yeah. get it to where you'd really want it. Yeah, the septic had to be redone. Um, several of the septic lines or, or uh, sewer lines underneath the house were going the wrong direction. Lines were backing up. The AC unit is from the early 80s. Right, we haven't redone We haven't we done, haven't done that yet, but yet. still, it's old. And the ductwork in the attic was all falling apart. The insulation was coming off, so every time the AC would come on, literally it would rain raindrops from the ceiling because of condensation on the AC ductwork. Right. So we had to go in and change all those. And then remember when we just couldn't get many lights to work or we replaced the fan that's right above us? Because mm -hmm. one of the things I did is wanted to put all new 
fans and lighting and fixtures, yeah. and fixtures because it was kind of a little more really farm school and a little more country than it is my style. Um, and anyway, when we did that, we found out the electrical was all yeah, the whole electric style. The electrical panel had to be changed out. And of course, there were lots of electrical issues throughout the house, which we have since resolved. Yes, every light works when you turn on the switch mm -hmm. now, which is yeah. a huge thing. Yep. But we saw all the work. We had to do a lot just to be able to function well in the house. But there were also, also some really amazing things that added character to the house. One thing is just knowing that it was built in the 40s is really awesome, in my yeah. opinion. And then that the shiplap that you see everywhere, it's not perfect because it's the original shiplap from the 40s. I love that because I wasn't about to jump on the trend, but if it was already here, then it was okay for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so the shiplap stays. Shiplap's even on the ceilings, it's really cool. Um, the hardwood floors are original. And so one of the first things we did is we had them sound, sanded down mm -hmm. and stained yep. a lighter color. Yep. Um, but then it had a wraparound porch, and that was a really big selling factor. Yeah, right? which one of the top things that you wanted done was the columns taken out, which uh, we finally got those taken out, and they're now wrapped in cedar right. uh, yes. wood, which looks really nice. So the original house had double the amount of columns. How, I don't how many total columns? There, there were 10. 10 columns that were white colonial style. Colonial style, right? Yeah. But then I had in my mind that cedar needed to happen because the entire house, including those columns, were white. White, white, on white. And so, and I love white. I mean, I love white. But anyway, one of the last things that we recently did was the cedar. It yeah. took a while. Yeah. But We also had to change out these super gaudy uh, oh, kind of New Orleans style light poles. We have heard from the neighbors that one of the very first owners, I think he might have built it or was right after the people that built it, he really loved the New Orleans style. Yeah, and so yeah, these white super gaudy light posts that have these big giant ball, balls on like them. Four giant mm -hmm. bulbs around the top and they're white colonial you know, and I already mentioned how there's a lot of white happening. And there were like five on our property mm -hmm. in the front yard for everybody to see when they drive by. Yeah, but we got those changed out. Knocked That's those good. down. It That's was a right. glorious day for me. <laughs> and now we have these black, more modern, more farmhouse mm -hmm. kind of things. Yeah. Um, another thing we did when we first moved in is we painted walls. There were some random green, green rooms and different color mm -hmm. rooms. Painted yep. everything white. I like white. Changed out the shelves. We the, added the the shelves you can kind of see ash, them. It's ashwood shelves. Which was really cool. We had to go to a wood a mill, lumber mill, lumber mill to, to have those, cut. Yep. those open shelving that you see behind us added to the kitchen. We the redid bathrooms. the bathroom in our master, which is right here. It is the layout still needs to be arranged, and we we'll, we will eventually add on to this house and change change it up a lot. But mm -hmm. for now, it meets our needs. But the master is right off this small living room. But the bathroom, um, you can. We'll show you the pictures right now of the bathroom. But we did the quick remodel of that before we moved in and took out the sinks and put in a new vanity. New vanity, but we kept the original clawfoot tub because I really loved that. Bathroom. It's a little small, but it's yeah. It, David's it not works. loving it yeah, just because yeah. for a shower it doesn't really. But she's got the tub, and I really wanted to keep the toilet, which was from the 40s. Yes. Which she's not too excited is, about the toilet. So may, you may toilet. or may not get to see the toilet. No, Actually, it's you pretty won't. cool. I don't show it. No, yeah. we don't need to show that. We haven't even moved to the outside. Well, we had to paint, we painted decks, and yes. um, we built, we had some stairs redone out mm -hmm. in the side of the house, and uh, we added all new gutters. Oh, yeah, gutters. The, the house needed gutters, and so we've added gutters to the house. It really, added, for the first five or six months, it was all things that were not cosmetic and not exciting and fun. It was mm -hmm. more like the really expensive things that people wouldn't notice, but it mm -hmm. had to be done. But since we've gotten to the outside, but we, now <laughs> the, the first major project was our chicken coop, really, yes, on the outside. Our chicken, let's just talk about that chicken coop. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked on Pinterest, like most women do, to get some inspiration. I don't want to copy. I just wanted some inspiration. I found this white mm -hmm. coop that I thought was just a small, little, simple coop. I showed David, and he showed our friend who was going to build it. 
And I thought it was going to be not that big of a deal, not too much money, not too much time. And then now we refer to it as the chicken palace. That's right, because let me jump in. What happened was I didn't really look at the picture that she sent me, and I just forwarded it to my friend who was going to basically build it for us. And uh, so we, I go with him to Lowe's and Home Depot to buy the materials. And next thing I know, I'm spending like $1,000 each time I go. And I said, oh, my gosh, how big is this chicken coop going to be? And of course, the rud itself is 12 by 16, and the actual chicken coop itself is like, I don't know, five, 600 square feet. It's got two separate sections and a door on the inside. And let me just tell you, we built this chicken coop to no end. It's massive. But it's awesome because it's going to mm -hmm. last a long time, yeah. right? And we can have a lot of chickens a and a lot of, chickens of eggs. Been in there and ducks. That's right. Ducks and and ducks, there. exactly. So we have 11 chickens now. We started out with 20. But 11 nine, grown chickens, and yeah. then we also have 10 more well, chickens. Well, we have 11 grown ones. Nine of them were died or got eaten by oh, hogs. Yes, and that's part of the story. And then uh, we now have six ducks and, I don't know, 10 or 11 chicks that we're mm -hmm. raising. Yes. So yes, we are we are going to be loaded up on eggs for a long time. We are already doing really well on eggs, but yeah. yes, we're going to have even more eggs, which is awesome. So, so then that was we, the, coop. the next project really outside after me getting the well redone so there's a well here, oh, and yes. the well was dead. So we had a well guy come out and re redid the well, put in a new pump and motor, and re ran, re -ran the uh, uh, the PVC 110 feet deep to pull the water up. And so we did that, and then was the pond. The pond. So here we live in an interesting type of area because we're literally sitting on sand like we don't have regular soil it it's is all sand, sand. Here. we're, we're right, right by the ocean yeah we're right by the ocean not literally right, like looking at the ocean but anyway so whenever people want to have a pond here all they have to do is dig and hit the water table mm -hmm. and then you're going to have to add a little more water some more water yeah i mean we have to supplement it some and we probably need to throw in a liner for the last four or five feet but right. uh, you can see the pictures of the pond and our kids love it. They don't care. They're like super redneck. We really kind of turned into rednecks lately, really, I feel like. I, yeah. Uh, but the kids are just jump right into the pond. It's one big giant mud hole. So our other house was larger and had a nice pool. Had a giant swimming pool and their fish. I mean, they were swimming before they were two. So they've really been missing their swimming pool, although they love catching bugs and they love the animals and they're riding mm -hmm. their scooter up and down the driveway. But since we had the pond dug out, they have just been, you know, stripping down their clothes, mm -hmm. jumping in in their underwear. Yep. Yeah, so, real redneck style. So we got the pond dug, and um, then the next major project outside was the, the fence, fence yeah. which we just got that done a few days ago. So to back up really quick, just the land alone had to have an old tractor removed, and there was that horse. There was a tractor sunk in the ground. And then there was something, what is it called? It was a... Um, a uh, uh, horse run basically it was like a, a it was a, a deal to lunge horses i right. forget it was what all you call rusted it, but, out i can't yeah. think of the name of it anyway and then it had old fencing and it had a ton of brush along the line and then extra brush yeah so just to be able to get where we are with the coop and the fence and the pond, the pond took a lot yeah of i forgot to mention yeah. that we had to clear a lot of brush and uh, again, I had another friend that owns a landscaping a company and tractor. Do awesome and things. so he came out and cleared all the fence lines for us, and yeah. which added, added a lot of extra room to the right. land. We have 3.4 acres of land, mm -hmm. just so it's not a lot of land, yeah. a but lot uh, we're going we're gonna to make the most use of it. So uh, we got the fence lines around the outside done, and then we added this fence around the pond and the chicken coop. Which food. is about an acre. Acre and a, acre and a, acre and a half. Acre probably. and a half fenced in so that we can keep all of our animals back in that area so that's been the most recent thing which will lead us to all of our future animals it's about right. to be go time so we want to get some donkeys some miniature donkeys and so right now all we have right now are a bunch of chickens we got six ducks we have two kittens that came uh well they're full grown now but we got them when we first moved here they they're came. barn cats they're barn cats i guess they're spoiled they don't barn eat cats. or kill, don't anything. kill anything they can't wait for their food at breakfast mm -hmm. at night but the kids love them that's panther and pumpkin and then we have our two doodle dogs we have a labradoodle golden doodle 
They're very big, and we always say they're they are more work than Arlo and Java. Yeah, they're anything else really, just because they want to eat the chickens and they yeah. want to chase down people riding horses mm-hmm. or outside in the front yard. But they anyway, bark all the time. And am I missing an animal? Well, so the other thing is that's important to note is our property backs up to the King Ranch, which, if you don't know, is if, is one of the largest, not the largest ranch in the world, it's eight hundred thousand acres and goes all the way to Mexico. And uh, because we're backed up to the King Ranch, we have all kinds of wildlife here. So coyotes have come yeah. through, javelina pigs. There are feral pigs. I haven't seen any yet, but my neighbors tell me about mm-hmm. them all the time. Turkey, you saw mm-hmm. a turkey come through. Yeah, one morning I was homeschooling in our room and I look out the window and a giant turkey goes across our driveway. Yeah, and so uh, fox, there, there are gray and red fox here. And then mm-hmm. also, uh, apparently there's Jagarundi. If you don't know what a Jagarundi is, you can look it up. They say that they're extinct, but all my neighbors say they've seen the Jagarundi. I don't know. And um, then also mountain lion. That's what they say. My my, All the neighbors have said they've seen a mountain lion around here, and I can only imagine what else is around here. So we have deer that come in, and one of the coolest things we had happen yes. was a little a young buck, mm-hmm. a young spike, just came over to the fence and, and didn't run away. to be our pet for like two days straight. It yeah. did not leave our property. So our kids were like loving it. We were just going up to it, feeding feeding it all throughout the petting day. It, petting it, holding it. it. Yep. Just randomly we had a deer as a pet. Yeah, and then after crazy. those two days. It just disappeared. It just disappeared. But we do always, one of the things I love, love, love about this land is that there's always wildlife to watch every single evening, even in the day, but mainly in the evening. In the yeah. evening in our back property where all the animals are going to go, we usually always have a bunch of deer. At well, we have a deer feeder back there. Well, so I mean, the, the deer, deer feeder, feeder attracts the deer. And then now like the, the uh, what are called whistler ducks or Mexican mm-hmm. tree ducks. Uh, which don't migrate very far. If they do migrate, they're here year round. So they're coming in. They've they're discovered the, the, the chicken scratch around the coop and they've discovered the pond. corn and the pond. So mm-hmm. we've got a, all these flocks of Mexican tree ducks coming in. But there was before that, in the last season, we had uh, sandhill cranes. Sandhill cranes, when they, they migrate and they seen come them through. them in person, but just our kids getting to experience all this has been amazing. Yeah. I mean, they're just pretty giant birds, but getting to watch them and sit out there in the evening has been so awesome. So, yeah. And so for else? all you hunters there out there, I would shoot a sandhill crane and I would shoot a turkey and I would shoot a duck and I would shoot a coyote. But I say no. And my wife's not letting me basically shoot any of that. Unless maybe the, co- into maybe like the coyote time, at in, some point. Unless but, we were like in end times or something. Yeah. But we're not end time preppers, but no. Uh, we, if we had to become end time preppers, we could. Uh, yeah. We, Although like all the neighbors would be, the neighbors would be here. shooting everything too. But right. Anyway. But I'm trying to keep the the animals visiting. So I have to go hunt <laughs> elsewhere when I go hunting. And I don't. Yeah. Ducks, I'm but anyway. So. And then recently, uh, we had a giant pot belly pig just decide to come. Well, visit. yeah, and uh, I was sitting in my truck and walking right down through the property line, and the dogs were barking at it, and I saw it was this huge. Slow moving, slow walking pot belly pig. And I didn't know if it was a wild hog or where, didn't we didn't know where it came huge. from. And uh, so we went out and videoed it and took pictures with it. And it just followed me right back. We put it inside of our uh, new fenced area just in case it was a pet of someone. Mm-hmm. And it just followed me right over there. And then we started calling all of our neighbors. Mm-hmm. Finally found out that it was our new neighbor. We have we had a house that was vacant for quite a while, but we recently got new neighbors. And apparently they have a giant pot belly big. Which we didn't know about. And so awesome. we're glad. I'm especially glad that we found the owner of that pot belly pig because Amber was determined already, yeah. to keep the pot I belly pig. I was making a home for it because which, if, if it's like... I, I'm fine with an animal sanctuary. If the animals need to come to me, they can come. So anyway, um, what else? What that's else? that's kind of, we have a lot of cool birds. So yeah, there's and, been a lot of eventful things and we have a lot more animals coming our way and the kids are loving it. They're yep. exploring all the time, jumping mm-hmm. in the pond, learning to take care of animals. Well, we're going to be getting a lot more animals, but right. cats, dogs, chickens, and right. soon to be donkeys. So donkeys are next on the you list. You guys are going to stay tuned donkeys. for the next part of our journey. Yes. And so I think that's it. I just yeah. wanted to share with you guys how much we have developed this land, how much we enjoy it. There's just something so cool about developing land and getting to see the progress and getting to just 
be grateful for every single thing you get to do. And then also just being creative, like getting to think of different ways to do things. Mm -hmm. Um, And then just the peace that comes with this land in the evening and watching the animals has just been awesome for us. You know, one of my favorite scriptures is in Psalm 18, and it says how because the Lord delights in us, he takes us to a broad place. That's my favorite too. And what that means is that the Lord always wants to expand our territory. But first we have to be faithful with the little so that God can give us much. And then we have to allow him to expand us on the inside so that what's coming on the outside, we're ready for it. And that's right. kind of what happened for us with yeah. this land. So Yeah, I had to really come to a place of being truly content with where we were, even though I longed for this. And then when I wasn't even looking, the Lord was like, here you go. So it happens. And if you're believing for land for your kids, and if you're believing for something similar, even if it's not land and animals, because mm-hmm. this isn't for everybody, yeah. just got to find your contentment and trust the Lord's timing. And be faithful with what God's put in your hand. And thankful for what and you have. don't complain. Be grateful. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we love you guys. We hope you enjoyed all of the footage that we've been sharing. and all of our recap of this and we'll be sharing more videos and more fun things about the farm. That's right. So stay tuned. Bye-bye.